Today we are going to be doing um, pizzas and dough balls. So a nice quick and easy one here. We're looking at uh, biological raising agents today. And we're, as well as biological raising agents, we're going to be looking at um, just making a simple sauces to go with that to the top, shaping. Um, and then with, with the excess of the pizza dough, we're going to be looking at uh, what we can do with that to make dough balls. Um, so that's uh, that's today. Um, nice, quick and easy one for you. Um, we're also going to be looking at the different types of natural biological raising agents you could use, such as um, uh, you could be using the sourdough that we talked about in the last lesson. And we've got some sourdough here to show you, uh, as well as the other types of natural raising agents. So um, that's what we're looking at today. So I hope everybody is well. Um, and and uh, I'd like to welcome everybody, obviously from Talking Girls Grammar School, but I'd like to welcome all of those that are joining us across YouTube uh, and letting uh, uh, let us know how you're feeling. Um, if you're from Talking Girls Grammar, just normal, put your notes down inside there. If you are watching this back on YouTube, obviously just leave your messages along the bottom. It'd be great to know that you watch this and you're taking part from across the world. Um, so yes. Uh, we are making uh, doughs and pizza. So let's uh, let's let's uh, very quickly. Those people who haven't seen the recipe, um, who aren't talking girls grammar, let me quickly um, show you the recipe and show you what we're doing today. Um, I'll just show you my share my desktop and share the recipe with you now. Okay. Um, so uh, here we go. We we've got um, this is the uh, dough ball uh, pizzas and dough balls we're looking at today. I'm using for those who are watching on YouTube the Hodder uh, Education Package, and that is the Hodder Dynamic Package. Um, key stage three exploring food uh, for key stage three. Um, let's go through and go th have a look at our recipes. So um, we've got a cheese and onion uh, pizza base and then we can obviously do lots of different types of topping onto that as well. I'll show you the basic and then we can go uh, with that one and we can make um, olives on that one, ham, whatever you want to. But um, starting off the basic, we're using a bread flour or if you can't get hold of bread flour in these lockdown uh, situations, that's absolutely fine. Um, uh, we'll try another type of flour. Um, ideally you're using a strong bread flour or a pasta flour or um, high gluten flour there. Um, if gluten free you can obviously use a, a gluten free flour and then add some extra uh, to uh, proteins to that in the way of xanthan gum would work well with that. Um, but we're going to go with it. I'm just going to do with the plain flour today because um, uh, it's quite hard to get hold of bread flour still at the moment. Now, fast action yeast, if you've got it, and I know how bit difficult it is to get hold of during lockdown and other situations. So um, I, I'm going to be showing you how to do this one with the sourdough. Um, so if you've got made yourself a sourdough, um, follow the instructions we left before. That's fabulous. I'll talk a little bit more of that in a minute. A little bit of oil in there, mix all those together. We're going to be needing this one. It's going to be slightly different if you're doing it with a sourdough. Um, the sort of needing that happens, needs to happen there. It's needing, needing to happen. It's a slightly different way of doing things. Um, we don't want to kind of overwork this one. Um, now we've also got um, some sauce we're going to make with this one. So chopped up onion, garlic, uh, recapping some of our learning there on uh, knife skills, and then adding in there um, tomatoes, tomato paste, a little bit of uh, basil, oregano, and we're going to blitz those ones together uh, and make yourself a nice little paste with that one. Um, so that's all we're going to look to do. Hopefully we shape that one nicely and make it into a, a lovely piece for you. Um, then uh, down from there, we're going to be making some dough balls out of the remainder of the uh, piece. Um, and that just makes lovely little dough balls. And have a bit of a play with that one. And uh, have a go with that one too. So you'll be able to um, use up the excess to make yourself some little garlic dough balls, which will be a bit of fun there um, when we're making up these ones. So that's that's what we're looking to do today. Um, so first we'll start with the, the pizza to start with, and then we'll move on to uh, the dough balls there, and uh, we'll go from there and make ourselves our delicious um, pizza. Um, like I said, you can put whatever you want in your pizza. Um, we're, I'm going to try be my flavour pizza. I'm going to be doing some olives and some mushrooms into there, but you can have a bit of a play with that one and do it as you will. All right, back to me before we start the lesson. Like I said, it's a nice, quick, and easy one today. Uh, we're going to be talking about biological raising agents. Here we go. Oops. And then we're going to be demonstrating how to make a sauce. Um, we're practicing a knife skills and using the cookout. We're going to be understanding biological raising agents today. Um, so let's uh, let's go back to the um, uh, the very beginning, and that is what we need to get ready. Okay, so before we need to get ready, we need to get yourself ready. We need to get your area ready. We need to get your equipment ready. And how do we do that one? Well, we remember that one through Hattie. Um, so uh, let's go through. Hattie is tie your hair back. The H is for tie your hair back. Wash your hands. Uh, okay, w w wear a hat if you want to. Um, 
Uh, put it on an apron, clean the table, and make sure you've got a tray ready for the next two, which is I and E for ingredients and equipment. You'll find that list at the bottom under there for YouTube. Um, so let me, uh, let's get back to me and we will go and we'll carry on. And we'll do this first bit together as we always do. Um, and I'm going to uh, speak to you and we're going to do this one together. So uh, welcome back to me. Uh, we are going to get myself ready, my area ready, and we're going to do that hatty together. So let's, uh, let's hop, skip and a jump over to um, my, across my kitchen to get myself ready. Uh, here we go, we're just going to go around my kitchen there. We're going to pop outside and get some um, basil and bits and pieces and some ingredients for later on as well. Okay, uh, so here we are at the kitchen sink. You know the drill now. You know how this works. About getting your hands ready, getting yourself ready to work. Let me just move the camera up slightly there um, so you can see what we're up to. Um, so we need to get ourselves some soap. So make sure you've got some soap ready to go. Wash your hands. Um, soap, and we need to brush the hands like that, then backwards in between the nails. Thumbs, thumbs, back of the hands. There we go all the way around so you are nice and clean everybody nice and clean nice exercise there then hot soapy water make sure you've got your hot soapy water ready to go there got my hot soapy water you can see that there i'm just going to wash my hands there so again back and forth underneath there behind the nails thumbs there we go back of hands make sure we're properly clean there let's get those wrists there we go make sure that's all 20 seconds you know the drill you know how this works so make sure you are properly cleaned and ready to go then switch those ones off um we're just gonna dry those hands as well get some sample um bit of roll there dry our hands off and we are nice and clean fabulous Okay, uh, the next bit is, um, obviously I didn't need to uh, do my hair up, I've not got a lot of it to go, but I do need to make sure that I'm dressed and ready for the part. So um, get yourself your, get your aprons on please, if you wouldn't mind. I'm gonna get mine, my, my uh, whites on, my school whites on, my chef whites on there. Um, so just get sure you are properly prepared before each lesson, protecting your food, protecting the food from you and you from food. Let's make sure we've got all our correct cooking PPE on personal protective equipment for ourselves. There we are. Um, and this is more to do with food hygiene than anything else to make sure um, before we start to cook. So make sure you've got your aprons on there. That'd be great. Okay, roll the sleeves up. And let's get my apron on. There we go. Make sure you've got your aprons on too. There we go. Let's tie up my apron up. All right, now my area has already been anti back down and nice and cleaned off, ready to go. Um, so we're, we're good from there. We're going to move on to uh, that area now and we're going to get ourselves set up, ready to go. OK, just quick move, hop, skip and a jump around my kitchen. Oh, there we go. And let's get back to our work area. OK, so we're going to be starting by making our bread. OK, uh, now. And this is going to vary slightly depending on whether you've done um, what sort of biological raising agent we're doing. Now, it could be a fast There's lots of different types of yeast out there. Loads of different. There are hundreds of types of yeast out there, okay? Um, and you'll find yeast everywhere. You'll find it on, um, here we are. You'll find it on, lots of my food bowl there. You're going to find it all over fruit, okay? Um, you're going to find yeast everywhere. And it's used for lots of different things. Um, we we use something, we talk about something called fermentation when we do GCSE, um, where you're using yeast to ferment and you know that bubbly stuff when you make beer and you get that froth on the top, that's the carbon dioxide being produced by yeast there. So yeast is a really useful thing. Um, what we can do is we can give it something to eat and drink, we're giving it something to some nourishment and then it's going to produce carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide is going to make our food uh, rise, which is what we uh, want to do today. You know, it's not going to be as fast as a cake um, because that's a chemical raising agent, it's a lot faster, that's bicarbonate soda um, bake and cream of tartar or baking powder, that's going to be fairly instant acid and alkali reaction, we've done that before. But um, this is going to be a biological raising agent. So um, let's uh, let's go with this one. We're talking today about um, biological, biological raising agents, raising agents. Okay. Now we talked a little bit about this when we were talking about um, our buns, we did our fish cakes before, but biological raising agents. So what do we got here? We've got a yeast, okay? So this is gonna be the yeast. 
Um, now, what does yeast do? Well, yeast is a brilliant guy. It's a fun guy. Uh, it's a microorganism, teeny tiny microorganisms. Now, if I was to get one of my hairs, just pull one of my hairs out and hold it up very, very close, um, you would be able to get 15 yeasts lined up back to back on one of my hairs. Very hygienic. But that's how teeny tiny small they would be lined up in a straight line, how, how tiny small they'd be under a microscope. Um, now we are going to utilize those yeast to blow bubbles into our bread. Um, we're going to create a bready structure um, and that bready structure is going to be made of something called gluten. OK, gluten. We've talked about before, but gluten. Um, and we're going to cr create that gluten. That gluten is going to be stretchy and elastic. It's going to be plastic and elastic, which means it's going to be a stretchy, uh, like a balloon would be stretchy, or, uh, uh, or we call elastic. And then it's going to be plastic. It's going to be moldable. It's going to be changeable. So if we put it back, it's going to go back to the state. So if you think of something like Trump Party, if you put your thumb in it and it goes back to the same state. So that's uh, what we're going to be doing. And we're making this gluten that's both plastic and elastic. Now, how, what do we make it out of? We make it out of flour. And that flour um, has got two, we're going to say we're just going to use a box standard flour here. That flour's got two um, proteins already in there called gliadin and glutenin. We're going to combine those with some liquids and we're going to create this sticky stuff called gluten. So that is what we are up to today. So let's get on and do this one. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a bowl, a mixing bowl, and you're going to need some flour. OK, so nice and simple with this. One. We're doing 350 grams of flour into this one. Um, now, whether you're using sourdough or a fast action yeast, that doesn't matter. The basics is going to be the same here. We're going to do 350 grams. So it's going to open up here. Uh, we talked about lockdown larders before, getting hold of flour. Where's the best place? Well, it is starting to get back into the supermarkets again now. But if you're still struggling, the easiest place, as I've said before, is to get these ones is from a commercial supplier. So commercial suppliers will, will supply um, homes now. So people that might provide restaurants or schools. So I'm using the same uh, company that uh, provides our school. Um, this is uh, Bid Food uh, Flour. Um, they provide our school. They provide nationally, of course, in YouTube. They provide nationally across the whole country and they're doing home deliveries now as well. Um, but anywhere that normally delivers to restaurants or cafes, would be a good place to be able to um, get it from. Alternatively, while pubs and clubs and restaurants and um, cafes are still closed, um, why not email them and see whether you might be able to buy off them? And uh, if it's close by, like we've done here, get from the pub down the road and you can buy and then they can collect it. You can collect it at social distance if they leave it outside, you can go and collect it um, and uh, you can end up with some good quality ingredients that way. So um, lots of ways you can still get hold of flour. All right, um, so we've got ourselves um, our flour in here. We've got 350 grams of flour in there, which is brilliant. Um, we're, we're ready with that one. Now in with the 350 grams of flour, we are going to be putting, um, we're going to be putting in there some yeast and we're going to be putting, obviously putting in some, there some liquid as well. So um, what we're going to do now, sorry, I'm just going to make sure we've got that all there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we need to get um, our liquids in there and we need to get our yeast in there. Now this is going to depend a little bit on uh, whether we, what sort of, what sort of yeast we, we're using, whether it's a sourdough yeast or a fast action yeast. Um, that's going to depend a little bit on what we're doing here. But we need to get liquid in there to make the gluten. Okay, so we need to get some sort of some liquids in there. All right, so um, I'm going to make a well in the middle. So I'm going to make a little hole in the middle. You can do this on the work surface if you want to. I'm just going to do it in a bowl just to make ourselves a little easier. So there's a little well in the middle there. Now into that well, I'm going to be putting in um, some mixture. Now, depending on what you're going to use for yeast, there are say lots of different types of yeast, and you can buy lots of different types of yeast from the supermarket. Um, although I like I say during lockdown, larder, I appreciate that it's a little bit harder. You might get many little packets fast action yeast packets, OK? Um, that might be what you normally use. Seven grams of yeast in there. If you've got those, brilliant. Whack them in the middle there. Um, uh, that's good to go. Um, and then you're going to need to add some liquids to that water, then add 150 ml of warm water. Um, so we're looking at a nice warm water in there. It's going to give it some uh, the yeast something to activate it. At the moment, it's uh, it's not activated. We need to activate that with some liquid. So we're going to, um, as well as fast action yeast, you can get other types of yeast in there, which you just have to leave the water in there to soak before you put them in. And then you've got the best of the lot. And that one is sourdough. So here is one of my jars of sourdough and it's just, oh, it 
smells delicious. So it should smell fruity and actually it smells a little bit alcoholic and a bit like a beer. Now I don't know if you can quite see this on the camera, I'm going to move the camera, but this is bubbling and frothing and frothing and bubbling away like you wouldn't believe it. Oh, I don't know if you can just quite see that one on there. Loads of bubbles in there. Okay, um, now this should be exactly what it is. You can see this one, very sour. Um, so, ah, yeah, 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 it is very, very sour. Um, hence the name sourdough uh, yeast. Um, now this one's been growing for since the beginning, beginning of the lockdown. OK, so you um, you might have been doing this as well. But we suggested over the holidays having a go and making this. So how do you make yourself your own yeast? Very simple, very simple. OK, 300 grams of uh, flour, ideally an unbleached flour. Um, you put in there, ideally a bit of wholemeal mixture of flours you've got. But I mean, you can start this. Was, this was started when we were right at the beginning of lockdown. So we had very little flour. So we actually used a plain flour with this one. 300 grams of plain flour in there. 300 uh, uh, millilitres of um, tepid water, not hot, not even warm. This is a big combination between warm and cold, okay? And that's tepid water in there. And we left it, stirred it up and then left it for a day. And then we came back to it and we watched it. And when it starts to bubble, then you start to feed it. And it's alive, it's alive, it comes alive. Um, uh, so what we did was whacked a bit of, um, whacked 100 uh, grams of flour in there, 100 grams of water, stirred it up vigorously and left it. OK, uh, and did that for about three or four days. Um, keep repeating that process uh, and we would take a little bit out each time. So obviously it's not going to fill up to the top. So um, you take about a third out would be great. Um, and then you uh, put in a little bit more flour, a little bit more water. So it just keeps building up and building up and you keep adding more and you'll start to find it gets really, really tight and active. So um, when we did this one, we put it somewhere warm, like in the airing cup, but put a bowl underneath or because it, sometimes it just bubbled right over. It got really, really active sometimes. Um, so put something underneath it. But what we've got here is a living organism. Now you can keep this for ages. Um, you can put this in the fridge and it slows it down. You can freeze it, obviously stops it um, doing anything altogether, get it out. It is very, very robust. It's going to last a long time. Smells wonderful. It's going to give you some beautiful, beautiful um, yeast spreads. So like I say yeast is on everything and you'll find that yeast is actually on the flour there. You're adding this water to it. You're giving it some, it's got sugars to eat in the flour. Um, so in the way of complex uh, carbohydrates which, um, called starch. Um, and that's in there. So it's feeding off that. And I just top it up with a little bit of flour when I want to we'll take it out of the fridge, activate it again, get it moving and bubbling away and it's ready to go. How much do I put in? Well, generally speaking, what I find with my yeast is I put 10 times whatever is in here. So if you've been using a sachet um, with seven grams, I'll put 10 times that in there. OK, so um, for this one, I'm going to be putting um, 70 grams in 10 times seven. Um, so I put 70 grams in for 350 grams. Um, so how let's do that? Do that with you right now. Why this? It's so bubbly and so yeast is beautiful, beautiful. So here we go. I'm going to whack that one in. Oops. So we know how much is going in there. All right, I'm going to be putting in, oh, it's just coming in one, two, three. I'm going to dig down to the bottom and get some of that really good stuff. Four. I reckon that's nearly there. Maybe there's just a little bit more in there. There we go. Now that is going to give you a beautiful flavoured bread. OK, uh, now 10 times everything for this one. So um, uh, that, that's already going to make our, our bread a little bit more liquidy, um, which is which is fine. Um, so um, I'm going to need to get my uh, water ready, but I'm not going to be putting all of the water there in that I might put in if I had dried active yeast because it's already going to make it quite moist. So I'm going to be putting in, as you can see there, you can just see there what I was just saying about, you need to get that yeast activated. Um, so I'm going to put some, a little bit of warm water in there. OK, so I'm, I'm going to put a little bit at a time. You can always add more water. It's very hard to take it away. So I'm going to put a little bit of warm, tepid water in there with it. Beautiful. Um, and then uh, as per the recipe, I'm now going to uh, add in a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of sugar. So just a little bit of sugar there just to feed it. So I've got a little bit of sugar here. How much sugar? I'm just going to be putting in about a teaspoon. Let me get a teaspoon there for you. I'm going to get a teaspoon of sugar. It's 
So um, I'll just go down into my bowl there so you can see my bowl. So I'm putting in there a teaspoon of sugar in with my yeast. Um, I'm going to be putting in some olive oil. Um, it's going to give you a real nice glass. It's going to be uh, make it a really manageable dough there. Um, so a teaspoon of the olive oil as well. Nice, nice bit of virgin olive oil in there. Let's put that one in as well. So there we go. So we've got olive oil. We've got sugar in there. Um, we're going to put a pinch of salt. Now, I'm not going to put the salt right on top of the yeast. We don't want to kill yeast. Um, uh, we're going to put it just down the side, but it's a really good one for activating those, getting to get the uh, gluten going with the gliadin and glutenin to get the new gluten. So a little bit of salt in there, um, which would be good. Help us all along the way. Um, OK, now the next bit is just a nice fun bit. All we're going to do now is going to stir this one up into um, a dough. Now, uh, that's all we're going to need to do on this one. We're just going to um, stir it, gradually bring the flour in. You can do it with a fork. I'm just going to do this with a spoon here. Just going to bring it all together. Now you can see it's a pretty dry now. I'm just going to add a little bit more liquid into there of my pre. Uh, so it's a little bit of warm water. There's 150 milliliters of water there. Just going to bring all that together. Sourdough, flour, sugar, salt, gradually bringing all that together. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it all together. Now, this is the next bit's going to change if I'm doing sourdough or if I'm doing um, a yeast. And normally a fast action yeast at this point, I just start to give it a good kneading for 10 minutes. Now with a sourdough, I'm going to be a little bit more delicate with it. I'm going to be going to be doing a bit of folding. I'm going to probably do it kneading for about three minutes. And then I'm going to leave it for um, leave it for about 15, 20 minutes, then knead it again, then leave it. Okay. So whereas you'd normally be doing this for um, I'm just going to get that one into there. Whereas you normally do this one for about 10 minutes, um, you'll say what we're going to be ending up doing this one, for this one. We're going to end up doing it for longer for the sourdough because it just takes that little bit longer to create the sourdough. But the bread dough that you get on the back of it is amazing. So you're going to be doing this one for three minutes kneading, 20 minute rest, three minute kneading, 20 minutes rest. If you're doing your sourdough, three minute kneading, 20 minute rest. Okay, so you're looking at about 60 minutes of resting plus your, your um, 10, 10 minutes. You're looking at really about 70 minutes in total there for the uh, sourdough. Now, if you're doing this with fast action use, you don't have to worry about that. Just 10 minutes of intensive kneading would be fine. Now, whether you're using a sourdough, or whether you're using um, a, a fast action yeast, packet yeast, what the actual kneading process happens is exactly the same. So I'm going to show you that one. So we've got some liquid in there. That liquid's in there now. I'm just going to get that one, and we're going to start to knead that. Okay. So I've got my ball of dough there. So let's go through the actual kneading process. Now the kneading, say, so will end up being pretty much the same whether you're using sourdough or not. Um, you're going to be using the same thing. You're going to be using the palm of your hand. You're going to be using the heel of the palm of your hand, this little part here. And the idea is to press it across and stretch it back. Press it across. We're not hitting it. We're pressing it across, stretching it back. And each time we do that, we're going to be putting loads of energy in. OK, so really push into this one. We want to be combining two, two proteins to create this new one. Uh, so gliadin and gluten are going to come together. Gliadin and gluten are already in there. And they're going to form this stretchy new thing called gluten. Now, uh, gluten is a stretchy elastic thing. In fact, gluten and glue get their names from the same thing, both from a stretchy elastic, they come from the Latin, OK, um, to stick. So we, we are going to be creating this sticky structure that the yeast is going to blow bubbles into. Now, let's go show you this process of kneading now. So what we do, we're going to be stretching across. I'll pull that back so you can see a little bit better. So we're going to be stretching across and then pulling back, stretching across and pulling back. Now, if it starts to get a bit sticky, we can just put a little bit more flour on the work surface. And then again, stretching across and pulling back, stretching across and pulling back each time. Now, you can do this with two hands. So you can go one, two, one, two. Now, don't forget, if I'm doing this for sourdough, I'm just going to do it for three minutes at a time. I'm just going to let this one rest each time um, with the uh, the first action, I just go with doing this for 10 minutes, OK? Um, and then after 10 minutes, I then let it rest. Now that letting rest period um, is what we call proving. So what we're going to be doing is going to allow um, the gluten to relax in the bread that we've been kneading and allow the yeast itself to be blowing bubbles, blowing carbon dioxide into that sticky gluten structure. Um, and I think the easiest way to try and think of this is 
if you can imagine, you can imagine it like bubble gum. Okay, so gluten being like bubble gum, stretchy, elastic. The more you chew it, the bigger bubbles you can blow into it. And that's the similar sort of thing we're looking at here. We're trying to create such structure into our bread dough that is lovely, open, big. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be, um, we really want to work it. So we've got something really elastic -y, um, that and plastic that our uh, yeast can actually blow those carbon dioxide bottle, uh, get the carbon dioxide into. OK, so that's what we're looking to happen here. That microorganisms, um, they're going to feed on the starch. The sugars that are inside the bread, they're going to create that carbon dioxide. They're also going to create alcohol, which gives uh, some of the flavors. So the alcohol will get burnt off in the cooking process. Um, but that's what's going on here. Now I'm just carrying on kneading, OK? Sourdough. So after three minutes, we'll leave that to rest. To go back, a bit more kneading and folding. Go back, rest and so on. If you're using a fast action yeast, just go ahead and knead this one for 10 minutes and then leave it to rest. OK, and we're going to leave it to put it in a bowl. Um, I put it in a bowl, probably put a little bit of oil, a little bit more olive oil just around your bowl. Leave it in the bowl and let it to rest. OK, and once we've done that, we're going to come back after an hour and have a look. But I've prepared one earlier. OK, um, now other things you can knead with. Yes, if you wanted to, I've got my lovely KitchenAid. Mm. Uh, oh, you can see the garden there as well. I've um, got a lovely KitchenAid there. You could use your KitchenAid if you wanted to. Um, you could use that one with a dough hook in um, to knead it if you wanted to, to do that. That would work well. Um, so um, you could do do that. Now let's uh, let's uh, let's have one here's one earlier. Um, so we've got our my my uh, one. I'm gonna leave this just inside and we'll go back to the one and then we'll, we'll get making it into our pizza. I'll show you what that looks like when it's being bubbled up and looking lovely. It's doubled in size. Okay. So just getting that one off the windowsill. Put a bit of clean film on it. Put a bit of tin foil or clean film on the top. Um, OK, and just so you can don't get any bugs or anything in there, but you'll see that the ball of dough has now doubled in size. So that's this one here, the dough ball there, and then we've got the one that's actually doubled in size, ready to go for our pizzas. OK, um, so that's what we're looking for. We've got our dough ready to now to make pizzas. It's been covered loosely with, I would say, a tea towel, a bit of clean film, and then leave it for an hour, and this is what we got. OK, we now need to, wait to make the toppings to our pizza, OK? So what are we going to do with this one? We're going to be using um, an onion and garlic. We're going to blitz those up with some tomato and some herbs, and we're going to make ourselves um, a beautiful sauce, OK? So let's get on with the chopping of our onions. Um, now, we've talked about onions and garlic before, so we're going to revisit some of the learning that we did previously on this one. Um, but uh, let me go through and chop up that onion and garlic with you. So um, we've got onions and we have got some garlic. Now we have some garlic and some onions here. We're going to just go recap on a little bit about uh, chopping techniques. Um, don't do with knives, you need to think of your knife safety when you're actually using these ones. Um, so think of the knives. First of all, let's choose your knives. You've got you've probably got two types of knives in the kitchen. You've got a large chef's knife here, and you've got a little one which is like a similar version but it's a paring knife. Okay, so this is probably one we use for fruit and vegetables. Um, it's a little paring knife. Flat to the side, one side curved and sharp on the other side, and that's a little paring knife. Or I can say, if you haven't got that one, we have got chef's knife, just a larger version of it, long, far, hard blade there, blunt at the top, uh, sharp on the other side. And we need to think about how we're going to be uh, using these ones. Remember, when you're carrying a knife, you only carry you carry it with the point to the floor, the blade to the back. OK, so blade to the back, point to the floor, carry one at a time um, down beside you when you're doing that one. When you get to your works area, make sure you put your knife at the end of the work area when you're not using it, not at the front. Um, so it's not going to hurt anyone. Make sure when you're chopping, you're chopping onto a chopping board. OK, so you should be actually on a chopping board. So we've got a chopping board there um, to chop onto. When you go to washing up those knives, please make sure when you chop wash the knives, it's the first thing you wash up. When you put go to wash it up, you don't drop it in the washing up bowl. You keep hold of it and you use a brush and you brush away from the blade, both sides. Don't use a dishcloth because if you're using a dishcloth, it's going to hurt your hand. Same with drying up. When you're drying up, don't use, use a tea towel. You want to be using um, just letting that drip dry at the back of the draining board when doing that. Alternatively, obviously, you could be using that one and putting it into a dishwasher in a safe place where to get in and out. OK, that's a little bit of your nice safety there. Um, let's talk about uh, chopping. Now we're going to be using the two, two cuts that we used before. We're going to be using the bridge 
and we're going to be using the claw. OK, um, two different cuts there and make sure you can remember which one and how to do this one with our onion and garlic as we revisit the way of cutting those ones. So um, let me just very quick reminder here about how to do that when you're chopping up onion. Um, so, so a nice simple way of doing this one when you've got your onion over here. Let's uh, quickly draw that one on the side here so you can see. Um, so we've got, um, let me go to the other side. Oh, yes, that's, that's, I can see that better. Um, so we've got our onion. OK. There's our onion on the board there. You can just about see that one. Yep, fab. Um, so you can see that onion there. The first chop we're going to do on the onion is we're going to go and chop the onion in half. And we're going to use a bridge cut. So number one, and that is a bridge. And we're going from the pointy top down to the straggly bottom. Number one. Number two, after on the onion, we then need to do a claw and we're going to take the top of it off. So we're going to do, we're going to go across there. That's number two. And that's our claw. OK, so we've got number one, bridge. Number two, claw. OK, and once we've done that, we'll then be able to reveal the next part of our onion. We'll, I'll talk you through that when we get to it. So let me just quickly remind you of that one. And I'm going to just quickly do that one on the chopping board with you here. So if you can see there, I've got my onion. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to, because it's not long and thin, I'm going to put my fingers around the onion. You see there, I'm putting it around the onion, not on the feet or the top there. I'm just going to put it around the onion. I'm going to use my knife. I'm using a larger knife. I'm using the chef's knife so you can see what I'm doing, but normally I'd be using the little paring knife there. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll use the little paring knife with me now. I'm going to cut down the middle. OK. There we go. Um, I've cut down the middle from the top to the bottom with a bridge. And I put my knife through the bridge and chop down. These two halves I'm going to put flat on the board like this. OK, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to from a bridge. I'm going to go into the claw. Remember thumb right back, finger over the top. I'm going to slice off the tops of these onions. Not the base, but the tops. Let's take those ones off. I'm going to take those ones off too. All right, knife down. I'm now going to peel back the skin of the onion. Just the outside skin of the onion. You see that there? Just peeled it back. If it comes off, don't worry about that. Now I'm going to go into the next cut. So I'm going to go, to, go into the next cut. I'm going to be doing a, again a bridge and a claw. So if you have a look on the wall here now, um, what I'm going to go from is if I've got my onion like that, with all the skin now is all down here. But what you'll see is I've taken that top piece off already. And what I've revealed when I've taken all the skin back is some very faint lines down the middle there. And there the lines are going to cut down. Okay, so the bridge cut number three will be another bridge. So I'm going to cut down as many of those as possible. I'm not going to go to the bottom. OK, I'm not going to go any further than that line there. I'm going back down three quarters of the way um, and I'm going to be using a um, number three. Which is going to be a bridge. Again. And then I'm going to do number four, which is going to be our claws. So I'm going to go the other way I'm going to cut that way. Again, I'm not again going to go all the way to the base. It will go down about three quarters of the way. That number four is going to be our claw. OK, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go the other way, bridge and claw again. Out of the top, down onto the board so you can see. Bridge, I'm going to cut down three quarters of the way to the end there. As many of those as possible. Let's say the same on the other one. 
Then I'm going to do claw, thumb right back, finger over the top, the slice the other way, and that is my diced onion. So recap on your knife skills again there. And there's my onion. Let's take away all that. Okay, onion diced up nicely there. So in with the onion, we do a bit of garlic. Now garlic, there's a big clove of garlic. Um, I'm going to do doing top, tail, and then I'm going to peel off the paper and chop it up finely. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, take the top of it, with a little claw, tail off it, little claw. Now the thing I said before that adults always forget is to crush it first. So using the fork there, put my thumb in my fork, I'm just going to give it a little crush. Okay, once I've crushed it, I'm going to take the paper off it. So here comes the paper, I'm just taking the paper off. Okay, paper is off that garlic, and now I'm going to chop that, that garlic teeny tiny small. Same as the onion, what I'm going to do mini teeny tiny little uh, bridge. You see that there? Tiny little bridge. And then I'm going to do a tiny little claw the other way. Okay. Onion, garlic, mixed together very nicely. Now, uh, to, to get these onto the top of our sauce, we're going to get the onion and garlic. We're going to get, we're going to be doing some more garlic in a moment, but we're going to get the onion and garlic. That onion and garlic, we're going to be very lightly sauteing off. Now, to saute means to lightly fry. We're just going to get the onion and garlic moving around the pan, okay? Um, so we're going to get the onion and garlic moving around the pan really, really quickly. And as we do so, um, they're not going to brown or caramelize, as we say uh, in GCC. They're not going to be caramelizing. We're just going to be softening those ones up. Um, in with that, we're going to be putting in some tomato and we're going to put some herbs. We're going to blitz them all up. We'll put them into a, a little blitzer here we've got here. Um, and we're then going to make our sauce out of that one. OK, so uh, just let's just go over to the um, heat. Let's go and we'll get all those together. So we're going to get those ones and we're going to put those ones, the onion and garlic, are lightly sauteed in a pan. So if you want to come with me, we're just going to go over to the cooker and then we'll get those ones done. So a bit of cooker safety, recap on what we've done before. So here is the cooker and you can see there I've got the frying pan there ready to go. I've got my onion and garlic. I'm just going to put the onion and garlic into the frying pan there just to soften those up. There we go. Onion and garlic are in there. Um, I'm just going to put the heat on there. Now, holding the pan handle, make sure you've got a pan handle, you're holding on to it. If you're not holding on to it, then you keep the pan handle away from the edge where you can knock into it. Okay, so make sure the pan handles are not facing that way. Also, remember what you use inside a pan. I've got a non stick pan here, so I'm using a wooden spoon or a wooden spatula would be fine to be using this one. You wouldn't be using metal in a non stick pan, otherwise, you're going to end up with all the little black bits in your food. So don't be doing that, all right? I'm um, going to put it in there. Do you need your oil? Well, not really. No, I wouldn't say so. You probably just dry fry this. Remember, you're not going to be, you're just softening these ones off. If you won't need to, if it's uh, need to, then a little bit of um, a fry. Um, one here, I've got an olive oil fry, fry of spray, just a little bit of that. Just to coat it, there we go, it'll be fine. Um, I'm going to just quickly stir this around. Now, all we're doing is just going to soften these ones off, these uh, vegetables off here, before we get them into our tomato uh, paste. So what we're going to do is, once we've softened these ones up, we're going to put them in with a little bit of tomato, uh, tomato, chopped tomato, a little bit of probably a half a can of chopped tomato, um, a tablespoon of tomato paste. Um, we'll mix those up with some herbs. Um, uh, the herbs that would be great with this one are going to be um, the oregano, uh, oregano is the Americans that call it oregano. Um, we're going to be putting in some basil as well. Um, so you can do that. You could use that if you, you could use dry or fresh. If you've got fresh, fabulous. Um, dry would work well as well. Um, if you've got mixed herbs instead, yep, go, go with that if you want to. Um, we're going to use a combination and then um, we're going to be using some more herbs for the dough balls, parsley. Again, if you've got dried parsley or fresh parsley, um, we'll show you how to do that one. Okay, so these are just um, just softening off nicely. Um, remember, keep, I'm keeping hold of the pan here. If you think it's getting too hot, you are in charge of the heat. So just turn the heat down a bit, take the pan off the heat, turn the heat, heat down. You are always in charge of the heat. The heat is not in charge of you. Okay, you want to make sure. There we go. I can smell that. Smells just coming off there. It's beautiful. Onion, garlic there. 
They're just releasing those wonderful smells. They're not browning. If they're browning, stop. We don't want to get to that stage. We're just softening all of those up nicely. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, really nice. Okay, um, I think we are to heat off now. Going to, back to our, our work surface, we're going to combine those together and make our beautiful sauce for the tops of our pizza now. Okay, um, so uh, we'll just do that one now. Leave that one out of the way. Um, so we're going to go back to the work surface. Um, we're going to go and prepare the rest of our sauce for you. Okay, so I'm just going to go and go back to the work surface, prepare the rest of the sauce, and we'll whistle those up for you. Um, ready to go. So what else do we need in the sauce? I'm just going to let that cool down over there. Um, fabulous. Um, let's get everything else ready for our sauce. So we've got uh, our pan, uh, we've got a little bowl here to make our rest of our sauce. Um, and that's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to combine those bits and pieces together. So into there. Well, we're going to be putting in with that chopped garlic, chopped onion that have been lightly sauced off. We're going to be putting in there a um, couple of, uh, we're going to put, sorry, we're going to put in there some tomato, chopped tomato. Let me get the chopped tomato for you. It's over here, right in front of me. There we are. So I'm just using some baked chopped tomato in there. Um, and we're going to be putting in there, we're going to be putting in about, um, we're going to be putting in there, Half a can of chopped tomatoes, so a 400 gram can of, can of, of tomatoes here. I'm just going to be putting half of that in, just opening that one up. Ready? There we go. There's my can of tomatoes. Just going to put half that can of tomatoes into there. Perfect. Half can of tomatoes. Okay. Um, in with that, I'm going to be putting in um, some tomato paste. So I've got some. Paste Paste. You might get it in the tubes, which is fine, or in the jars. Um, totally up to you on that one. So a couple of tablespoons of that. Tea, sorry, tea, is that in there? Bam. Okay. Fabulous. So that's now there. We've got the paste. We've got um, in there. We've got the paste in there. We've got the tomato in there. Okay. Um, we're just going to be blitzing all of that really nicely to make our pizza sauce. Um, now there were two herbs that said to go in there as well. So. Um, let me just go and grab you some fresh herbs from the garden there. Um, okay, so let's just give me a moment. I'm going to be putting those ones in it. So I've got some some fresh oh, basil from the garden here. It's going to be putting some of that basil in there as well. In that basil goes in there as well. Drop that one in there. Cut it over about three. Three, four spoon, uh, liters of basil in there. Um, put some uh, oregano in there as well. Get that in there, a little bit of that in there as well. Teaspoons worth there. Fabulous. Um, so we got a bit of a combination of our dry and our fresh, fresh ingredients there. Um, so uh, we've got a really nice um, piece to be going on with. Um, I'm just going to uh, blitz those up. So let me just go back to where we are on the recipe for anyone who wants to know um, where we are on the recipe. Um, here we go. So there we are on the recipe. You'll see that we have come down from, um, come down there. We are, uh, that uh, we've gone straight on to uh, number seven now. We're on to number seven of the uh, ingredients there. I'm just going to put, put while you're reading that, I'm just pouring those into the little um, whizzy in there so we can get ready to, to get with those up, ready for our sauce to go in. OK, so I'm just going to get those in there while you're watching this. But we're on number seven now. Um, number seven there, we've chopped up the onions, we've chopped up the garlic. Um, we've uh, put getting those in there with the tomato paste. The, we're going to uh, blitz all of those up. We're then going to make ourselves a beautiful pizza shape. Get that one into the oven. Now you'll notice from the recipe card there, we need to be having them in the oven for gas smart. We should be on um, gas smart seven. Uh, should be 220 on the oven there. So get your oven preheated. So your oven's ready to go there. And then we'll start to make put all of this pizza together. OK, so I'm going to just quickly go back to myself now. We're going to leave a little bit of dough just for the dough balls, um, but we are going to make our lovely pizzas. All right. Um, back to me. Fabulous, fabulous. Nice to see you again. So in here, I've got the onion and garlic. The onion and garlic is uh, going to go into my little, um, little blender there. My little blender is going to be whiz that up. 
So we're going to put the onion and garlic. You can just see that one. What I'm doing there. Onion and garlic is just going to go into there. That's beautiful. It's going to make a lovely tomato sauce. That's on top of our pizza there. Fabulous. In that all goes. In it goes into our mix. We have a beautiful mix. It does smell absolutely delicious. It's smelling just like a pizza there. Okay, let's put that one on the side. All right, so now we've got all of that into our um, little blender there. I'm going to now just put that on the top and blitz all of that up. So we've now got our pizza dough, which is ready to go. Um, we have got um, have our sauce here ready to go as well. So I'm just going to uh, put those. There, blitz those up okay, um, and then we are ready to start constructing our pizzas and get them in the oven. Um, then after we've done that we're going to show, quickly show you how to make um, some dough balls as well. So here we have that one, they're all ready to go. I'm just about to see, here we go, so I'm just going to blitz that up. Bit noisy now, sorry. So, one in a blender if you want to if you've got a bigger blender then... okay let's see how that's looking looking nice yep blades in there so you can put you can just see that basil could do with a little bit of chopping up and more I'm gonna mm, smells delicious Beautiful. That's going to mix together really nicely. Um, okay, so we're now going to combine all of those ingredients together. I'm going to make our pizzas. Okay, so let's go back to pizza dough. Yeah, it's beautiful pizza dough. We're going to get the pizza dough laid out. Now, before we do the pizza dough, uh, we thought we might make them into some, some hearts. Okay, so you, um, you can make them into whatever shape you want to be. Because obviously, you can make traditional round pizzas. So I thought it might be fun just to do a little bit of some heart pieces. So um, the easiest way to do that, get your piece of grease free paper, um, fold that in half, okay? And then we're going to be just making a little line down there and we'll cut we'll cut that one in half and make a little heart out of it. So if I just grab, just grab those scissors there. Um, so I'm going to grab the scissors. We've got, what we've got going on here is we've got so a piece of greaseproof paper, fold it in half. It's going to mark down the side of that, half a heart. That's going to fit onto our tray. Here's my tray. Okay, so I'm just going to mark, make sure that fits onto it. So I'm going to go halfway down the tray. Can you see there? And then I'm going to mark on there half of a heart so um, I've just marked in there half of a heart and then I'll cut that one out and that's going to be making that's going to make um, our lovely pizza piece I'm just going to use my scissors So um, with that, I'm just going to cut through through the heart, half the heart there, to make some lovely heart-shaped pieces. Oh. Okay, there we go. And open that up. Ta-da! 
So I've got my heart shaped pizza there and I'm going to be putting my heart shaped pizza um, onto my tray. Now I'm going to get use my dough to roll that one out. So now rolling the dough out, you can either just um, you can either just uh, there we go. Um, you can either just uh, use a rolling pin or you can use lots of other different things we can use it. I've said before, use a, uh, you can use a, a milk bottle would work fine if you want to. Um, you can to roll this out, that would work. So I've got my lovely dough there. Smells delicious, lovely sourdough dough. It smells absolutely divine. Um, ready to go and it's really you can see the bubbles come up in there already it's wonderful so i'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my work surface then i'm going to roll that one out into the shape of my pizza let's take some of that out so I'm just going to let that one flop out so bubbly now i'm not going to need all of this i'm going to use about three quarters of this and the rest i'm going to use for our dough balls okay so i'm going to use three quarters of this for my pizza this is so if you can just see on the bowl there those long stretchy strands there that's the gluten there can you see, you might just be able to get really close so it's really long stretchy strands of gluten beautiful strands of gluten it's really lovely so that is what we wanted that is going to be great it's got a really lovely stretchy stretcher structure of gluten that we're going to have ready and in there which are full of gas from our sourdough yeast or from our fast action yeast, whichever yeast you used on there. So I'm just gonna, there we are, there's my dough ball. I'm just gonna make that into a circle with the flour. It's ever so sticky and beautiful, really stretchy, really glutinous, glutinous, gluten, loads of gluten on there. Um, and I'm gonna just use, um, so you use a rolling pin, um, you stretch that out or a bottle and just stretch that one out into it. Um, into the shape. So we'll roll that one out there. Yeah, and we're just going to roll that one in. And then once you've rolled it out flat, we can start to shape it into the shape of our heart circles. Whatever you're going to shape your heart, your yours into rainbows. If you want to make a ra into a rainbow, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to use that as a template now, um, and going to make that one into a heart. So just using that as my my template there. I'm just pushing that one now with my fingers into the shape of my heart pizza. Oh, sorry, you can't see that one. I'm going to just show you this one now. Might just be able to see it on the chopping board there. Um, so I've got my my template there, which I've used to make my heart shaped pizza there. Can you see that one on there? That heart shaped pizza. Fabulous. Um, I've got my sauce ready to scoop onto the top of that. And then um, I'm going to be putting some cheese on top of that as well to create our beautiful pizzas. OK, uh, tray is at the ready. A um, bit more free paper onto the top there. Um, and we're going to lift my heart shape onto there. Ready to cook off nicely. OK, a bit more free paper on there. Put my heart onto there. And like I say, we're going to just put uh, some of that beautiful sauce on there as well. I'd be lovely to see those pictures of what sort of hearts, what sort of shapes. If you are making a heart shaped pizza, that'd be wonderful. What shapes are you going to make? How are you going to make yours? Okay. So lift now my heart onto pizza, onto the uh, tray. Now, if you've got a proper pizza tray, it's wonderful. You've got those ones. With the holes in we've got them at the top there you can make some really big pieces um with that one but i'm just going to make this one as you might do at home onto um, a tray so if you can see that one now i've got my, my heart shaped pizza onto my tray there we go lovely sourdough pizza onto the tray okay on top of that heart i'm now going to be putting um my pizza topping. I'm going to spoon my pizza topping on the top. I'm going to use a spoon and I'll spread it over with the back of the spoon onto the top of my pizza. Okay, so nice and simple here. On it goes. So using my mix that I made earlier, that's now going to go onto the top and I'm going to just spread that onto my pizza. And I'll just see there. There we go. I'm just going to use that and spread that one onto the top. There we go. 
Use the back of the spoon. And then there I can see in some of that garlic. Beautiful. Nice chunky vegetable. Pizza topping there. Some of that basil's on in there as well. So now spread all that around my pizza. Now, if you wanted to make a stuffed crust, um, obviously put a little bit of cheese around the outside. Move the crust over if you want to. That would work absolutely fine. I'm just going to move. Don't go right to the edge. Don't need to go right to the edge. So obviously that beautiful crust on there as well. I'm just going to make my pizza around the outside there. So I'm just now topping wise, you go with what you want to on this. Be adventurous as adventurous as you want to be on this one. Um, uh, ham, pineapple, olives, anchovies. Um, I've seen eggs on the top of these ones. You, I mean, you can really go to town with a pizza, can't you? But in all sorts on there, roasted vegetables, aubergine. I mean, uh, the 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 options are absolutely endless about what you could do with these ones. Well, there we go. So I'm just right around the edge there. Just having a bit of a play, nice and relaxing, bit of art here, creativity on a plate. There we go. And we can just be as creative as you want to here. So I'm just maybe you want to make a face out, you know, in primary school ways, you know, when you made faces out of pizzas, you do what your fans this one. But I said I'd like to see the most creative one possible here when you're making your pizzas. There we go. All right. So I've got my pizza top pizza on there. Um, last but not least, we're going to be putting a little bit of cheese on there as well. So cheese wise, um, you're looking around about 40, 50 grams of pizza of cheese, I would say on this one, um, just to go with the top of the go. I'm still getting really carried away with my tomato. I love my tomato on there. Just using the back of the spoon to go all the way around. Fabulous. Um, so I'm going to put a few olives on my one. I love a few olives on mine, so I'm going to get some olives on there. Just going to put some uh, black olives on there. Chop those ones up. Nice and small. Get those ones on there as well. Arrange some of those over the top. Love my olives. Love olives. You can say you go with what you want to on this one. Um, be as creative as you want to. Just remember, if you're chopping up things, remember to use your bridge and your claw again. Just to make sure that you are being safe when you're chopping these up. Um, you could put tuna on, I suppose it's already. You could do what you fancy on this one to make this one a beautiful, beautiful pizza. OK, so I'm just going to put a few more. I might put some mushrooms on here as well. Just add some more vegetables into this one. You see how that's coming together now? Fabulous. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful pizza there. Ready for your lunch today, or dinner, or break? What depending on when you're watching doing this one? Um, maybe you're going to try and make a breakfast one. That'd be interesting. See how we go with that. We've got a nice section of olives on there. And my heart. There we go. All right, I'm going to put some. Um, I don't know, I'm going to leave that one up here. That's quite nice, like it is, isn't it? It's quite a nice selection of olives on there. I'm going to go with um, my cheese in. So you grate up your cheese. Remember, with cheese graters, cheese graters are like little knives, so you can still cut yourself on a cheese grater. You might not think of it like a knife, but you can do. So just be careful on there when you're doing one. So we're just going to get the cheese on there now. So grate up some cheese to go on the top. Beautiful. Just using a mild cheddar on this one. But you could put mozzarella on it, get a really nice stringy fit, fit, finish to it if you want to, whatever your cheese you can get hold of ready and during lockdown. And this would be a lovely way of using up um, lots of foods to put on the top, but also you can use up whatever cheese you want to on there as well. Nice covering of cheese there. There we go. One pizza. Go. 
Um, you want to bake this for about um, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how big yours is, how big your paper, how big the dough is, how much big your pizzas are on there. And that um, is your pizza now. All we need to do now is we need to finish that off. We're going to finish up the rest of the dough and we'll make some little garlic dough balls. All right. So that's the next thing we're going to do. So pizzas ready to go into the oven. Fabulous. Um, we'll just put that one over there in a minute and we'll get that one into the oven. Next thing we need to do, work in our dough balls. So how are we going to make our dough balls? Another tray ready to go there for, you, for that one. And you want to be um, making your dough balls um, using the remainder of the dough. And we're going to be making those dough balls up. Let me just quickly flick you back to the recipe so you can see what we're doing on that one. Oops. Here we go. So um, we've done we've done the the uh, pizza there. The next bit is the dough balls. So you can see what I've done there is I'm going to get the rest of that dough. Uh, we're going to make it into a dough ball. We're going to melt it, with, melt some butter, um, and we're going to uh, grate some garlic into it, and we're going to be chopping up some parsley or put some fresh parsley into there. Um, mix those two together, melt it with the butter, and then we're going to put them over the dough balls. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to get the dough balls made. And then we're going to um, make put a little bit of butter, about a knob of butter, about 30 grams of butter in with some uh, grated garlic and some chopped up parsley or some um, dried parsley if you haven't got any of that. Um, brush the balls with each of these and then we're going to get um, going to get going with getting those in the oven as well. And they'll take about uh, 15 minutes. So um, we'll just get these ones made as well. Um, so I'm just going to oops, uh, send myself live. So we should have nearly done everybody. OK, back to me. So I've got the last bit of my dough, lovely, sticky, gooey, sour, sour dough there. And you just feel that. Oh, it's beautiful. Now I'm going to just make that into a, like a sausage. For the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to chop them up into even size um, sections and then we're going to make them into little balls. OK, so if you just have a look at what I've got down here on the surface, you see up there I've got my dough there into a long sausage. Dough ball sized. I'm going to chop um, Chop them up, get a nice um, clean knife. There we go, nice clean knife. Um, we're going to just chop these ones up into balls. Okay, now it's important that each of the balls are, are the same size. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some dough balls that are burnt, some dough balls that are undercooked, and only a few you can actually eat. So, got there we are. So, roll those ones into like little ping pong ball size. So there we go. There's one dough ball, and we're just going to make sure they're all similar sort of size. If one is a little bit bigger than the other, pinch a little bit off one and put it into the other. I'm just going to roll that one up as well. So we've got all of these dough balls roughly the same sort of size. Rolling them together again. Fabulous. Well done, everybody at home. You're doing great. Nearly done. Just another five ten, five minutes left on this one. And we'll get going. All right, dough balls now done. So if you can see there, I've got um, some lovely dough balls there ready to go out of the same mixture. You might just be able to see it on the board there. Can you see those dough balls? So what we need to do now is just going to melt off a little bit of butter, grate some garlic into there with some chopped up parsley. OK, I'm going to have got some chopped up parsley I've grabbed from the garden, some nice fresh parsley there. Um, so let's uh, let's go back to uh, back to the hob. Um, so we're going to need to melt some butter in with some, I'll take some garlic over there and grate some garlic there and we're going to get those ones ready to go. So we need just walk over there and we're going to need a little bit of butter there, garlic in the butter. Fabulous. All right let's get back over to the hob. And we'll just get this one done. So um, I've got here um, some butter there and the garlic. I'm just going to get a pan out or um, do that one. There we go. So onto the hob there, wooden spoon. And we're just going to melt off, um, melt off a knob of butter into there. Okay. Um, so butter into um, the pan there. And the butter into the pan. In with that, we'll put the heat on there, just melt that one off. Now remember when you're melting, when you're using the heat with this one, again, we need to make sure the pan hand 
Panhandlers are not facing towards me or towards anyone there's not them. Not um not over the heat of another ring, but over the side. So I'm just gonna put that one onto the side there. Um, and that is just uh, heating up, heating up nicely. It's just starting to melt the butter there. Now in with the butter, we'll put some garlic. We'll need the uh, cheese grater. Just gonna mash up some garlic. Here, there we go. So I've got my cheese grater there. Just gonna take the edge off the um, off the ends. So all you need to do there with this one is I'm just gonna take the ends off them on the top of the board here. There we go. Take the ends off the garlic. Nice and simple way to use up any old bread dough, this one. Make some garlic dough balls. Okay, that butter is melt, melting away nicely. You just hear that one melting off. Remember in your so if you think it's too hot, that's fine. Turn it down, take it off the heat, turn the heat off if you want. Garlic there, we're gonna use the cheese grater, we're gonna melt the garlic, we're gonna use the cheese grater, I'm gonna grate the garlic into the butter there. Be careful because it is like little mini knives. If you want to, you can chop it up as well. You can do that instead if you wanted to. Just gonna grate that one into. We can use a garlic crusher if you want to. Garlic, great, crush the garlic in there. That's fine. Okay, that's some garlic in there. Um, nicely into there, melted up nicely, garlic and butter. Um, depending on how much garlic, if you like a bit more garlic in there, you can go with a bit more garlic. I might put a little bit more garlic in. Got some more garlic down here. Let's put another clove in there, shall we? Um, so put another one. So another garlic clove here. Just chop the ends off. On the chopping board. And we're just going to take the paper off and then grate that one in the same way as we did before. There we go. So and then I'm just going to grate that one in. Beautiful. Smelling again. Absolutely delicious here. So, melted butter and garlic. Did say I was going to put something else. Turn the heat off now. It's all melted off. I'm um, going to get some uh, parsley. We get some fresh parsley in there as well. Or you can use dried parsley, either either. Okay. Got some fresh parsley from the garden. You can use either use some fresh parsley, flat leaves for curl parsley there. I'm just going to break that one up. Throw that one in, try to tear that one up teeny tiny small. Okay, that's great. Just chop that one up. Not tear it, it, tear it up, just tear it up, put it straight in there. There we go. If you want to chop it up, that's fine. I'm just going to tear this one up into here. Tear this into tiny little pieces. Fabulous. A bit of flat leaf parsley. Or if you want to put dried parsley in there, they've got some dried uh, dried parsley in there as well. You can put a little bit of dried parsley in if you wanted to. Okay, nicely done. Stir that one together, and then all we have to do now is just brush that on top of the balls, get them into the oven. Um, what you can use to brush? Well, um, you can use a pastry brush, or if you wanted to, you could use an old, uh, well, not an old, a new, uh, a new paintbrush. So your paintbrush, you can use one of those, or you can use a pastry brush. We can use a pastry brush. Um, we're going to just brush those over the top of the balls and get them in the oven for 15 minutes and then we are done. So back over to me, back over to the work area. Fabulous, nice to see you again over here. Okay, so what we've got now, I've got my um, mix there to brush on the top. I've got the balls of um, balls here, dough balls here. I'm gonna get them onto a tray. Let's get them onto the tray, that's there. A bit more greaseproof paper on there. There we go. So I've got grease free paper onto the tray there. I'm going to put our dough balls onto there. Let's get our dough balls on there. Fabulous, all nicely lined up, nice round dough balls. Can you see that? Hopefully you can all see that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the brush 
in with the garlic and the bear, and I'm just going to paint those over the top, just like that. Okay, get all of that on there, loads of garlic on there. Just going to paint that butter and garlic just over the top. You can see all that, see that there? Fabulous. Gonna put that one on there as well. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So the biological raising agent is still continuing. The yeast, that is, the organism is still continuing to blow all the bubbles into there. There we got it. These are going to go into the ovens, 220, same the same shelf, shelf below on the pizza. Um, these only need um, about five, ten minutes with these. But obviously the pizza is going to need about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20, depending on how big your pizza is. There we go, I'm just going to get the last bits onto the top of my dough balls there. Fabulous, loving those, they look wonderful. All right, into the oven. Okay, so i um, got my pizza, got my garlic dough balls, and they're all going to go into the oven now. Um, don't forget to say slightly less time for the dough balls. Um, and that is me ready to go. Um, fantastic. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, please send me the photos of your um, pizzas and your dough balls. Love to see them. Thank you very much, uh, Girls of Talking Girls Grammar. Thank you very much if you've been joining us from uh, on YouTube. Uh, as always, it's been great to have you in my kitchen and uh, look after yourself. Take care. Um, look after all those around you. Uh, keep on cooking and um, to send me all the info, send me all the lovely faces of what you've done and tell me how it went. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Goodbye.